All right, I got some stuff in the mail today. I've got my high voltage capacitors. Uh, I wanted some good ones, so I didn't buy them at the junk store. I'm not sure if they have, have nice high voltage caps like this at the junk store. A bit hit or miss on the high voltage stuff. They have lots of old, low voltage stuff. I could find low voltage stuff all day long. And I went ahead and ordered some replacement Rifa caps as well. Official Rifas. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at these. The uh, caps that were in there were quite uh, quite cracked. <laughs> so this one goes over here. So that fits nicely. Look at that. Like a glove. And then I've got some, that's a, that's a 0.1 microfarad. And then the little guys over here, the Ys, are 0 0.01. And so let's take those. Uh, they are cute also. Official Rifa. And they're marked Y2. So one of those goes here. And uh, some solder in that hole. A bit of solder. I'm going to have to desolder that a little bit better over there. Oops. And then one of them goes here. Oh, come on. And that needs maybe a little bit of desoldering. Oh, there, that one goes in. That one's fine. Bend those over. And yeah, let me heat up my soldering iron. I know everybody's jealous of my soldering iron. Heats up in about, I don't know, 15 seconds. <laughs> Doesn't take long. It's, uh, it's not doesn't work like a normal soldering iron. It has 13 megahertz of RF coming up this cable and the, the RF comes into the tip and then the RF gets turned into heat here at the tip. Uh, so yeah, it's already hot. All right. And this one goes here. That's good, and then that hole needs to be opened up just a tiny bit. Oh, I could do it two ways. Let's try the let's try the braid first. And that filled up the hole. It's kind of nice. There we go. I think that. I think that one worked. Yep. Worked like a charm. I kind of have a love-hate thing with solder braids. Sometimes it worked great and sometimes it just makes it worse. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I don't have enough practice with it. All my life I used a solder sucker, so. Braid was kind of a, a new thing. All right, I need some cutters. These will work. And here. It's sticking out a bit. Think I'll cut him off just because I can. Okay, there we go. All right, so then the high voltage section, I had these uh, caps here, which were uh, 100 microfarads at 250 volts. So that's what they looked like in the olden days. And uh, this is what my new one looks like. Oh, it's taller. Oh, I hope that won't get me in trouble. Oh, I hope that won't get me in trouble. I can always bend them over, I guess, but shoot. That. 
That will get me in trouble. Oh, darn. Because the power supply sits in like this. And these guys are too tall. Oh, no. Ah. Uh, well, let's see. Can I bend them over where they are? I can bend that one over. I guess I can bend them over. That's kind of ugly. Shoot. Shoot. Which way do I want to bend them? That way or this way? I think I want to bend them this way. Ah, oh, that's ugly. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, well. Electrons probably won't care. But I do. I do. Look at that. I'm going to have to bend them over. Ah, ugly. Ugly, ugly. And how far do they need to go over? Maybe quite a bit. Hmm. Shoot. That's not good. That's not good. I need 45 millimeters. Yeah, they need to lay way over. Ah. Not fun. Not fun. They will have to go almost horizontal like that. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I am not a happy camper. So I'll put some, uh, I'll put some insulator on these wires and then I'll stick them in there so I can bend them over. Maybe this one can go this direction and the other one can go that direction. Well, that's kind of, I kind of like that idea. That's not as ugly that away. Let me find some, something to put on these leads. We will put a little bit of insulation on these. Okay, plus and minus. Let's solder these down. Is everything stay in place? All right, so this one will get bent down there. And then this one will kind of go over the top like this. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, not quite sure how much I need here. I wonder why they decided to make such a tall, skinny capacitor. Seems a little on the strange side. I don't know. All right, what do you think? Close enough? I like the reefers though, they're pretty. 
<laughs> All right. I did mention last time there was a wire that didn't seem to have a home, and I found the home for it. So let's put this let's put this together first. I can talk about that. Let's see here. I want to make sure. These are all going the right direction. And these are going down. And something seems to be binding up somewhere. Where is it? Oh, it's this one. It's my new cap. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay. So we have this in place. So there's a thermal cutout here that sneaks under this away. It tucks in right down there. And then there's an insulator that goes over over all of this stuff here. So where's my This looks like it goes here. And it has a ground connection, so it has a star star washer on it. So I think that's right. And then these guys plug in there. Let's put this thing on. And that must go like that. And then everything else I think had a washer. So yeah, there's three of those. Yeah, seems right. I suppose I should test out the uh, test out the power supply before I screw it down, but I'm not going to. This way it's secure and I won't have a tendency to zap myself. So yeah, we will test it like this and I can probe it easily. All right. All right, we'll do this live on camera here. Let me turn the power on. No sparks. No smoke. And let's probe for some voltages over here. This looks like ground to me. And All right, so I think this is a floating ground over here. So this is ground. And we have minus 11.4, 12.5 ground, and this one better be 5, 5.3. So I say the power supply is working without a load on it, at least. So it's interesting that the um, that the supply has minus 12 volts on it and it's not used. And then on the board, there is a five volt or 12 volt to negative, negative five volt converter. And why did they didn't bring over the minus 12 from the power supply? I'm not sure. So it could have been that this thing could be operated by batteries as well. So um, they decided that 
the battery needs to be plus five and plus twelve. So two two separate two separate voltages. And that comes in on a connector on the front panel. And so they figured, ah, we don't need much of minus five. I think it's only for the RS232 or something like that. And so um, that looks good to me there. And the five volts is over there like that. I believe these go on like this. I will double check my photograph once I plug them on. But I'm pretty sure, because I just tested it, that they go like this. And this weird cable that is used for that weird video card that I do not have any longer goes like that. All right, let me check my picture. All right, I took a picture just for this. Um, shows me the uh, shows me the connectors on the uh, on the supply here, and I do have them plugged in the right way. So we are ready to go. I like that plugged in. I'm not going to plug it in. Well, okay. Oh.
All right. Well, there we go. Uh, we're getting uh, we're getting a picture down here. It's upside down, <laughs> but it's there, and uh, the dim is working. And uh, it says to insert a floppy, and yeah, everything seems to be just fine. Hit the reset button because the reset button. Oh, the reset button is working. Good. Wasn't working before, so I guess it's a power supply issue. Um, so I think the thing to do is to, uh, yeah, flip it up the right side up and let's give it a try. All right, Osborne one, press return. And it's lighting up the uh, light and it's reading a disc. There we go, loading Microsoft Basic. Sorry, the drawer is making noise. It's not the computer. <laughs> and there we go. It says, uh, it says okay. So basics working. Uh, system gets you back out. And we should be in DOS then. There we go. A, a colon or A, a, a greater than. Uh, der. Yeah. There we go. Not much on there. Uh, there's an auto start program that that boots basic. Uh, there's a C basic on there, C base two, and Xder. Let's try Xder. Uh, just different directory program. I got a bunch of directory programs, so I've got a huge <laughs> library of uh, C -C CPM programs and stuff. So I need to figure out how to transfer them onto this uh, onto this machine and. Uh, but yeah, looks like it's working. So let me uh, play with it for a while and I'll see if I can't, uh, I'll zoom in and demo it for you and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, power supply repair complete and successful.